Thank you, Sister Josephine. God bless you. The sun rendition encourage us to give our life, our thoughts, our sickness, our situation over to God. Give it over to Jesus. Whatever you think is a burden to you, He has said. Come to me, or we labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. So, for that reason, I don't know why we want to put that in our head. We don't need to put it on our head anymore. Please give your body to the Lord. He's able to carry it. God bless you. Uh, before we go into the word, can we have a word of prayer again? People who have been here, they know we pray about three or four times. Can we have our eyes closed? Father Lord, we thank you again. As your word go out, Father Lord, we pray that we touch the heart of your people. Every heart of stone this morning, we ask you to turn to heart of flesh in the mighty name, I mean, heart of uh, flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your spirit, Father, reign supreme upon the heart of your people this day and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. This morning I'm going to be talking on the topic everybody has heard this one time or the other. It's simply titled, You Must Be Born Again. You Must Be Born Again. Uh, it's so interesting, even Christians, we know what it means, it, 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 it is for us to be born again. We know what we enjoy, but sometimes we don't really get to the to the rudimental part of it to know exactly what are the benefits, what are those things that are there for us to be born again, be born again, to be born of the spirit and not of the flesh anymore. Let me read my Bible passage and then we go from there. I'm taking my Bible reading from the book of John, that is Gospel according to St. John. Chapter 3, and I'll be reading from uh, verse 1 to 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is within him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and one, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word in Jesus' name. The Bible passage is simply telling us Nicodemus was a high, highly respected teacher. He was somebody very influential. You could have called him a double professor, 
of those days in laws in things that people were supposed to know but he was blind he had no idea of what is meant by being born again he has a question that if a baby that is born today has come to the lord that baby will understand exactly what that is meant what what, what that is saying he's asking that question because he has no idea so you can see what we're talking about so what i'm saying is it's got nothing to do with your age it's got nothing to do with how long you've been in the church it has nothing to do with your pedigree this is what we are talking about it's a thing of the spirit the bible says whoever give themselves to the things of the flesh will unto the flesh read corruption but those people who give themselves to the things of the spirit we by the spirit get or read eternal life you see the same bible what that tells us that the flesh profits but nothing the flesh has no ability to give you anything good but it says the spirit gives life every one of us want life do we can i have your hand up if you want to have real life god bless you we all want life but let me tell you the truth you cannot have real life in the flesh because the flesh does not give life when we came into this world we already came with our baggage that we inherited from our great 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 grandfather and mother i'm talking about adam and eve we came into this world with sinful nature fleshly nature that cannot deliver us from anything and guess what that's why we are saying we need to be born again period that is what is meant by being born again that's it jesus came to deliver you Jesus came to deliver you from these works of flesh. The Bible says that the works of flesh are made manifest. Guess what? And the same Bible says, these are the works, these are the fruit, this is the fruit of what? Of the Spirit. There's nothing you do that you don't do with the Spirit that has good end. The flesh leads to destruction the flesh leads to sin the flesh deceives you like we know our flesh the world we live in and the devil those three they destroy human beings and don't you ever ever discount the flesh the flesh is able to destroy but how can you get out of the flesh? You can only get out of the flesh when you say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you and everything will change. Let me take you into the test again, then you will understand what I'm talking about. You see, despite the fact that Nicodemus, the example we have here, he was knowledgeable because he was man of the flesh. He was talking according to the flesh, the Bible says. You can never grasp anything when you are talking about things of the Spirit. It's not possible, the Bible says. Anybody that lives out of the flesh, you have no idea what we are talking about. I wish you could see the things you can enjoy when your eyes are open. When you can see in the spiritual realm what is happening around you. That is an outcry of Jesus for you. That is what Jesus wants for you. He doesn't want you to be in the dark. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever comes to me will not walk in the darkness, but will walk in the light of life. That is what he's saying to you. He's calling you to come. If you don't know Jesus, let me tell you, you may not be wearing glasses. You may have 20, 20, whatever, whatever vision. You are still blind. I guarantee you. You are as blind as anybody else will be. The day you know Jesus, you begin to see. He says, I have the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus did not just bear this. He got this by what he did for us on that cross of Calvary. So I'm appealing to you this morning. You don't want to go on living in the flesh. It only leads to destruction. Nothing good will come out of it. 
It is your flesh that will tell you you are a lonely person when you are depressed. Your flesh will tell you you cannot have to anything when you are having issues. But the Spirit will tell you, I am with you even till the end of age. The Spirit will tell you, I will not leave you nor forsake you. The Spirit will tell you, what are the promises of God for you? And then you can lay hold of them. That's what we are talking about. Let me tell you one thing. Jesus said to the disciples and the crowd, He said, Be of good cheer. He was pointing to it. He said, In this world, you will have tribulations. He was not placing a cross over his disciples. He was selling them the truth. But he said, Be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Jesus has done it all. It is just for your own taking. But we refuse to take what has already been done for us. We think we are smart in our home. Guess what? The devil will keep us as long as we want to remain in the garden. The devil is happy. That smartness we think we have in our head, the devil will keep deceiving you. All he needs to make sure you do is to remain a man of the dust. Adam is referred to a man of the dust in the Bible. If you remain the way Adam was, you still be behaving that way. You're not going to change, unfortunately. But it is when you see the Spirit walking inside of you, things begin to take shape. Amen? Amen? That is where we need to be in the name of Jesus. You see, man became spiritually dead and degenerate after Adam and Eve willingly followed the lies of the devil rather than obeying God. And man cannot perceive any spiritual thing any longer except he becomes born again. See what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 5 to 6. It says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That says it all. The book of that same Romans. Going further down, says, because the kind of mind is talking about the fleshly mind now, is enmity against God, for it is, it is not subject to the law of the, of the Lord, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. How I wish I could explain this in a clearer way. And I know God is touching your hearts for some people that are grasping what I'm saying. Let me be honest with you. If you, have a, if you have a child who is five years old, and as a mother or father, you are about 60 or 65, the day your child receives Jesus, that five-year-old is smarter and wiser than you. If that, that five-year-old is committed and is connected, you better listen to him or her. When he has prayed, he will tell you what you don't know. And you still think you are the parent. You need to wake up. You don't see what is going on around you. You don't know what is going on around you. Because you are still after the man of the dust. The Bible says, the first man, first Adam, he came as a living soul. And he said, the last Adam, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, he came as a spirit that gives life. As a life giving spirit. What am I saying? The same way we were born, born of the world, when we came naturally from our parents, that same way, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they came together, they have a plan for you and I, so that we will be delivered from the dungeon of life. Let me tell you one thing, it doesn't matter how much money you have. So don't pity those people whose hours were in flood. If they know Jesus, they connect, they're gonna come back. And I'm not talking only in the material things. Their spirit will be heightened. They will know this place is just a stepping stone. We are living for eternity. eternity. And for your information, some people don't know. They think the moment they close their hearts, that is the end of it. No, it's a continuum. You continue to live, but where you go after this side of eternity is what you need to know. 
Some people will open their eyes, they find themselves in hell. Others will open their eyes, they find themselves at the feet of the Lord Jesus. And thereafter, they live with Him in joy. That's what I'm talking to you. It doesn't matter whether you live for 100 years, 120 years, 140 years. The Bible says, a thousand years is just like what? A thousand years are just like a day before the Lord Jesus. So what are you talking about? 150 years, 200 years? Doesn't make any difference much. What makes difference is where you go when you leave this place. Neither does it make any difference whether you have so much money. I gotta be honest with you. I haven't seen anybody yet who put all their money and all their possession in the U-Haul and said, okay, I'm dying tomorrow and I'm taking this with you, uh, with me. No, it doesn't happen. The moment you close your eyes, if you don't have good family, good children, somebody will come here and if you have not done good things so that God will send people who will take care of you, somebody will come there and just eat your dead body and be looking at the house. What does she have in the house? I'm telling you the truth. I don't know if you heard the news lately. A son that went and killed the parents. He colluded with his younger brother. He's saying now that his mother, younger brother is not involved. He went, he's 22 years old. The parents were 56 and 57 and 59. He thought maybe he would have everything they have. And I was wondering. You see, the, the devil would deceive anybody to do any stupid thing. He went in there and he killed both of his parents in cold blood. I'm telling you, the guy is in jail now to be tried. You see, it's smart. When they had that child, tell me, didn't they celebrate? Didn't they rejoice? Would they have known that child would come and kill them? Let me be honest with you, nobody is praying for that. But the truth of the matter is, everything here is nothing. It says, I am the truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You better, better just open your eyes and stop living after the flesh. The flesh is nothing. I am telling you today, by the special grace of God, just like Apostle Paul said, and I hold that in my right hand, for me to live is Christ. For any reason for me to live, to continue to live, is because I'm living for Jesus. Otherwise, I'll go and be with Him. Anything that would change my focus, I'd rather go and be with Him. So I'm telling you how desperate that is. Because there's nothing here. I'd rather go and be at His feet and enjoy what I need to enjoy. So if you want to stay in this place, this wilderness, and you don't know God, it's a miserable situation, I have to be honest with you. And I implore you this morning, you don't waste your time. You do not waste your time. Sometimes I wonder when some people will come to the Lord at age 90. It's never too late, don't get me wrong. But imagine what they would have enjoyed. What they would have enjoyed if they had known the Lord in the early years. That is the truth. And we have to know that the truth, most of the times, the truth is very difficult to our hearing, especially when we are still man or woman of the flesh. You need to know, the spirit is the only thing that can give you life. Amen? Amen. Let me just uh, say this to you before we round up. Because I believe we ought to understand how we need to live in the spirit. The first thing you need to do to ever live in the spirit is to give your life to Jesus. That's the only thing. The only thing that gives life is the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, that's the only thing that can give you life. And then you have the Spirit living inside of you. And then the works of flesh will not overcome you anymore. That is where you need to be. That is the first thing. If you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm telling you, just experience this for a while. And see if you're going to want to go back to the old life. Try it and see. I always tell people, try him. He walks. Why do people go from one uh, uh, doctor to the other? They're looking for one that is better. They are telling you, you have the divine physician next to you. He's right here. You are refusing to let him into your life. Unfortunately, please, I'm, I'm, I'm imploring you this morning, please, 
do not put it away. Give your life to Jesus. You know, the de delay giving your life to Jesus has three main consequences. Let me tell you that. Your heart may become hardened and the gospel becomes irrelevant to you. Jesus may come back today and tomorrow will be too late. You may die today and never have the chance again to reconcile with your Creator. Unfortunately, for some things, some people have been given up to reprobate mind. The Bible says this was the judgment that was given in Jesus' day because they knew we was that we were the Son of God, but they refused it. Jesus pronounced on them. He said, "In sin." They will see, they will not perceive. In hearing, they will hear, they will not understand. Lest their eyes be open and they be saved. I am telling you, it comes a time. If you are too hardened in your heart, it comes a time when the gospel is preached. It's nothing to you. What does that guy say? It's nothing to you. I tell you, you are on the way, express way to hell. If that is your mindset, just pray this morning. That he will touch you. Just try him and see. You will see the difference you've never seen in your life. The Holy Spirit will come where you are. He will touch your heart. And you begin to see the difference every day of your life. That is what we are talking about. I'm not asking you to, to send some money or do this before it happens. No. It's never in my, in my power. But it is in the power of the sweet Holy Spirit. So what are you waiting for? Nobody is asking you for money. He's asking for your heart. Give your heart to him. The Bible says. Nobody is going to say that the word of God is too far from us. Right? It is here. You can hear it. You are hearing. Why are you rejecting? Why exactly are you rejecting? Turn back from your old way and commit your way to Christ today. And you will see how things will turn around. Pontius Pilate, he did something. When Jesus stood before him, he presented Jesus to the crowd. He said, what will I do with Jesus, the man called the Christ? I'm saying to you this morning, I have presented Jesus to you in the way I know. And I'm asking you the question, what will you do with Jesus? You just heard about him. And for your information, take this with you. You may refuse Jesus into your life. But something is this. You cannot deny Jesus. It's not possible. You cannot deny Him. Because He created the world you are living in. The very breath you have in your nose, He holds it. If it does like it goes. But thank God it's not like the devil. So you cannot deny the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way you can do that. The Bible says, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. The same in the beginning was with God. That without him nothing was made that was made. And the Bible says in name was light. And that light was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. We are talking about Jesus. So how can you refuse water? Are you not going to drink water? Jesus is everywhere. You cannot reject him. If you try to reject him, if he's visiting here, you're going to have that going on in your head all the time. Because everywhere you go, Jesus is here. In your bedroom, Jesus is there. In your shower, Jesus is there. When you see, He will show you yourself. That is wrong. Then you need to turn back and know the only way is to give your life to Him. And when you do that, things become different in your life. And then you begin to see what we are talking about. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 14, it says, the blast, the blast uh, backslider in heart will be filled with their own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. You see, those people who are a habit, it doesn't matter what you say. They think it's something else you're saying. But when the Holy Spirit touches them, when He touches them, things change. That's what we are talking about. Yield your heart. Yield your heart before your Lord. And see what happens from this time onward. Just give it a try, if that is what you want to do. Well, maybe it's worth a try. Let me see what happens to me in six months. If I will become a new person like that gentleman is saying, let me see if things will, will change for my life. Why not try it and see? You've tried so many things that have failed you in life. 
So what is happening to you? You don't want to try Jesus? I mean, I can't imagine. It's, it's a smart choice. Try him. I'm not even asking you for money. All I'm going to do is give you Bible as you are going. And if you need resources, I will give you more in the name of Jesus. That's all I'm saying. Is there anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus this morning? We'll pray with you wherever you are. Anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus? Please, indicate by raising up your hand. Anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus? Please, don't put Jesus up this morning. The votes, the casting of the vote is going now. The devil will be telling you, don't bother raising up your hand. People will be looking at you. <laughs> don't be deceived. That's the life of the pit of hell. Please, raise up your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus. He's the only one who is able to save you. Please, don't put it off. And if everyone here has given their life to Jesus, that is my joy. But don't you go away from this place this morning without holding that in your hand. That unless you know Jesus, you are blind. You have no idea how blind you are. You are so, so, so blind. You don't even know who is around you. You don't know who is sitting next to you. You don't even know your household. Except the light of God comes over you. And then you begin to see the right way. Amen? I will be closing by saying this. The Bible says, The sacrifices of the Lord are a broken spirit, a broken and a contract act. The Bible says, God will not despise. I leave that with you this morning. Release your heart to Him. That is the only thing He's asking you. He's not asking you of anything. Please, release your heart to Him. Even as we leave this place today, Please yield your heart to him because he is still the same God. He will touch you. We are needed to be touched. Amen? Amen? Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you again. We bless you. Thank you for your word that has come God forth. Thank you for we know, like you said, heaven and earth may pass away, but not a single of your word that you have spoken will pass away without accomplishing that for which you have sent it. Lord, as your word has gone forth to your people this morning, Father, we pray it will begin to bear fruit in their life. Those people who have not known you, Jesus, you will touch them your own way and bring them to your understanding. Let the nakedness of life, let the foolishness of life be explained, be open to them, and they will know that indeed you are the only one who is able to save. Lord, as we go now, even to share the fruit, we pray, Lord, that the food will be blessed in the name of Jesus. We pray against any form of injury, even as we go up and down, to help all the people here, that your protection will be over us, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen? Amen. Can I hear him? Amen. Please, don't forget, we're going to be here again on the 28th of May. That is uh, the last Saturday of the month. And that is how we do it every last Saturday of every month. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. It is well with you in Jesus' name. We are going to go ahead and begin to get the food organized. God bless you.